When comparing the specs between the current AMD Ryzen processors and Intel's 8th generation processors, we're getting more cores and threads on the AMD side, but better clock speed and single thread performance on the Intel side. So what does this mean for video editing? A claim I see floating around quite a bit is that Ryzen is better for productivity. But really, what does this even mean? The term productivity could mean a whole host of things, but I get it. In synthetic benchmarks, the Ryzen processors clearly make their mark against the competition. But honestly guys, in real world tasks like video editing, I've seen some mixed results, mostly due to the fact that programs like Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects are not completely optimized in terms of scaling core and thread count with performance. So let's say you've got about 300 US dollars in your budget left over for the CPU in your system and you want to get the best results possible for both video editing and encoding. We're going to take a look at if you should go with something like the Core i5-8600K which you can currently pick up for 299 US dollars or if you should go with something like the Ryzen 7 1700 which is currently on sale for just 269 US dollars but that also usually sits around the $300 mark as well. Something to keep in mind is that the Ryzen 7 1700 processor will work just fine on a B350 motherboard which is generally a bit cheaper than the Z370 motherboards that are required to run the i5-8600K. So when everything is said and done you will likely be paying about $50 more for the Intel processor with the current pricing. Now, as most of you guys know, the Ryzen 7 1700 is an 8 core 16 thread processor with a base clock of 3 gigahertz, a boost clock of 3.7 gigahertz, 16 megabytes of level 3 cache and a 65 watt TDP. And that high core and thread count is very enticing when considering multi-threaded programs, but with the Adobe Media Suite we may find the higher clock speed of the i5-8600K actually take the lead in some tasks. So this should be a very interesting battle. The 8600K comes in at 6 cores and 6 threads, so we're getting just a third of the total threads of the Ryzen 7 1700 chip, but with a much higher base clock of 3.6GHz and boost clock of 4.3GHz. Now in terms of overclocking, we have quite the gap between these two chips. The i5-8600K, an engineering sample mind you, can hit 5.4GHz stable at 1.45V, whereas the Ryzen 7 1700 could not be pushed beyond 3.9GHz no matter how high I had the voltage. I really wanted to hit that 4.0GHz sweet spot on the Ryzen 7 chip, but I guess I was just a little bit unlucky here. But don't worry as we will be leveling the playing field and for the testing we'll be setting the 8600K to 5.0 GHz as I believe this is a much more achievable and realistic clock speed for you guys and as always I'll be including both the stock and overclocked results. The test systems will be linked in the description below but here they are real quick with the same graphics card and memory being used for both test systems. Also I will be including the i7-7700K results as I have previously ran all of these benchmarks with that processor as well. All right, now let's look at the benchmarks. First, let's look at Warp Stabilizer. And for those who don't know what this is, it's basically a Premiere Pro function that stabilizes a video clip by reducing the deviation between each frame. This can take a long time to analyze. And personally, I find this as one of the most time consuming portions of the whole editing process as I shoot quite a lot of B-roll. Now here we're stabilizing a 25 second 4K clip and the i5-8600K does come out on top, indicating that this task mostly benefits from clock speed, also indicated by the stock Ryzen 7 chip coming in with the slowest result. At 3.9GHz though, it isn't doing too bad with a score of 434 seconds. Now let's look at video playback on a 4K timeline and here we're seeing just how many frames we're dropping through a 60 second sequence in full resolution. Here the Ryzen 7 1700 does exceptionally well and the video playback was buttery smooth with only a dropped frame here and there. Most of you won't be playing back in full resolution though, so in half resolution, we can see here that the Ryzen 7 chip is pretty much unbeatable and was dropping virtually no frames at all, making for a very smooth editing experience. When rendering out a preview of the same 60 second sequence, the Ryzen processor again showed the Intel chips what was up, completing the render preview in just 13.3 seconds once overclocked and still beating both the 8600K and the 7700K at just stock clock speeds. 
In motion tracking, something that I do quite a bit of when overlaying text onto a clip, the i5-8600K comes back out on top and not just by a little bit either. Here the Ryzen processor took a painful 38.5 seconds to complete the motion tracking analysis, an extra 15 seconds on top of the overclocked 8600K. Do note that this is only for a 10 second video clip as well, so if you're doing multiple clips in each video, this can really add up and slow down your productivity. Finally, let's look at the export times and here I was expecting the 8 core Ryzen processor to come out on top, but this wasn't the case. Here the overclocked 8600K is about 1 minute quicker for the 1080p export and over 2 minutes quicker for the 4K 30fps benchmark. And it's also important to keep in mind here that you sometimes might need to export multiple times for a single project since the first export might have a couple errors that need fixing, so that 2 minutes could really add up over time. Okay, now summing up all the results, let's estimate how long it would take to complete a typical 10 minute video project with all of those factors in place. Here we're assuming 120 minutes of editing time, plus 5 minutes worth of warp stabilizer, plus a 30 second penalty for every percentage of frames dropped during playback, plus 10 minutes worth of render previews, plus 25 seconds worth of motion tracking, and lastly a 10 minute 4K export time. Here the 8600K does prove itself to be the faster processor when looking at all of these video editing tasks as a whole, with the overclocked Ryzen 7 chip being about 17 minutes slower in the end. And do keep in mind that this is for a typical workflow for one of my projects, which includes quite a lot of warp stabilizing and a bit of motion tracking also. And these were the tasks where the i5-8600K does take the lead. So realistically, if you're not doing any of that at all, the Ryzen 7 chip would be the superior processor. Video playback and rendering out previews were far superior on the Ryzen 7 chip thanks to that multi-threaded performance, and if that's what you do most of when it comes to video editing, then that's going to be the superior processor for you. I think it's clear that these tasks in the Adobe Suite really are a bit of a mixed bag. Some tasks favor higher clock speed, whereas others will favor a higher multi-threaded performance. I really wish that tasks like warp stabilizer and motion tracking were better optimized in terms of parallel programming to better utilize the extra threads on the Ryzen processors, as right now they do seem to favor single threaded performance, which does indicate a lot of serial overhead. So guys, basically look at the video editing tasks that you do more of and choose the processor that has the best results because it really is a bit of a mixed bag. For my workflow, the Intel processors seem like the best choice since they have a much faster single core performance, which does give better results in the majority of what I do. Once again, guys, a huge thanks for watching. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.